Hello everybody, my name is Darren Riddell and this is my uh, presentation of my senior thesis for Capstone and Integrative Studies at Texas Tech University. So, my introduction. Merriam-Webster defines the word technology as the use of science and industry, engineering, etc. to invent useful things or to solve problems. Um, this speaks volumes to the idea that technology is meant to improve our lives and make tasks much less complex to complete by utilizing what it creates. Technology is always growing, technology is always changing, and the big question that we have to ask ourselves is do people understand technology and how it grows? Every year there's going to be a new phone that comes out, the new iPhone, the new Samsung Galaxy, the new Google Pixels. The, every year there's going to be new iPads, there's going to be new TVs, there's going to be new everything that comes out, and with that comes changes to technology. And we need to ask, are people keeping up with it? And if so, what kind of technologies can benefit? And where this comes down to is technologies in the workplace. Excuse me. Technology in the workplace has a lot to do with how people interact with each other. So, and how people not interact, but do their work, excuse me. So, uh, there, so basically there's meetings with people across the world instantaneously. People are accessing the internet more with the phones they have in their pocket than they do at the desktop computers on their own leisure time. A lot of work, there's obviously the computers they use, but to get the information they need, it's a quick Google search away with what's in your pocket. So the provoking thought is, what about technologies in our workplace? Do employers feel that they have a firm understanding on the technologies available to them in the workplace, and do they utilize these technologies to the best of their abilities? And are the technologies benefiting them in easy, any meaningful ways? And the big question we want to ask is, how are technologies going to be utilized to facilitate change? So the angle I'm going to look at this from is, uh, how are technologies... How can technology be used to facilitate some sort of workplace change? How can the employee to employer communication start through technology? What methods will be best? So if employees feel that they do not have sufficient technology available to them within the workplace, then they may not be able to optimize their work to produce the best results. These days, companies are investing so much money into modern technologies to give their employees more ways to look and more ways to work effectively. Employers need to look into if there's a method to create effective changes through the use of technology and make it certain that the employees would want this as well. So, understanding the how and why of the way employees interact with the workplace technologies is key to optimizing the workforce to function and flow to the best of their ability. To put it in layman's terms, the concise research questions that will be explored are how can employees facilitate effective communication with their human resources department to work to implement change? How can technology play a role into this communication, and once a change is discovered, what kind of leadership strategies can be utilized to implement this change most effectively? These questions are important because technology isn't just a big aspect in the workforce these days, but it's the workforce. Nothing's done on paper anymore. The only things that are on paper these days are what is printed off of, basically, what's printed off of computers. Everything is some sort of somehow archived on a computer. Everything is somehow utilized and put into a computer to create a situation where everything is documented online, which is more efficient. But the idea here is how can we utilize this technology and stop using suggestions with word of mouth and stop using suggestions with ways that people need to look at, to, to talk to the manager. And it's important that we do this in some sort of anonymous way. That way no nothing befalls the employees who make these suggestions just in case the manager is malicious or in any way or something along those lines. So, the literature review. This problem will be looked at through the lenses of communication studies, human resources, as well as organizational leadership. These disciplines are the most relevant to this topic because they will all play a role in the workforce in discovering if technology can work to facilitate effective change to employees in today's workforce. Communication will work to find the best methods for employers to discuss potential problems in areas that require change with their employees in the most effective manner. Human resources will look at what practices are in effect currently, as well as what HR strategies can be utilized to make effective change within the workforce. Organizational leadership will look at what leadership styles are most effective regarding leading the employees in this change, if any change is deemed to be necessary. So, to begin considering this problem, starting with what types of effective communication strategies will work to solve this problem is best. In the article title, Innovative Communication Strategies to Engage Employees at Every Stage by the researcher Kaman, the author is stating that by leveraging a multimedia approach, including mobile, social, and customized multimedia content, Employers can simplify complex topics around onboarding benefits, compensation, health, and financial wellness, as well as more. Utilizing technology such as social media pages or networks to voice changes in policies can be very important to a company's overall success. Though this idea can be altered, instead of us looking at it as, as some sort of employer-to-employee communication strategy, we can look at this more as 
maybe flipping it to pertain to what I'm talking about and making it as an employer or excuse me, employee to employer communication strategy. And what I mean by this is finding some sort of platform that employers employees can talk to their employers on to make suggestions for changes, utilizing the technologies they have to create this more efficient situation where they can talk about change. So the author goes on to state that in the conclusion of this paper, as the needs, wants, and preferences of the workforce continue to change, HR must guide their companies on how to deliver information in a way that keeps employees satisfied, productive, and eager to stay with the company for the long term. This speaks volumes to the issue at hand with the complex problem. Human resources needs to find innovative ways to keep their employees satisfied and make current employees want to stay, as well as make new candidates want to apply. This starts with listening to their employees. Creating a method for employers is key to accomplishing this but it is not everything. In the article titled Strategic Human Resource Leadership Style Characteristics by Woods, it is stated that human resources professionals have not been prepared to address the levels of complexity required to strategically lead complex people into complicated systems while working in a dynamic environment. This is due to older HR practices that are not being updated for today's society. A lot of companies still utilize HR strategies that are older and they're a little outdated because we have evolved so far with technology that are utilized in the companies that we're not looking at it. But a common complaint that I've heard a lot is uh, that a lot of times human that uh, the older people in the in the uh, in the workforce, the Generation Y, the baby boomers, the Gen X people, anyone really besides the millennials, so I've heard, basically say that they basically say that that's they're going to be the hindrance to this. They're going to be the ones who are not going to be able to adapt as efficiently to the change. They're going to be the ones who don't accept the change as willingly. But according to a researcher named Tracy Rizzuto, so it was found that the, find, the findings from this study that she did suggest that older workers react more positively to the inflammation of IT initiatives than their younger counterparts, contradicting conventional beliefs that older adults resist IT innovation. So this conflict arises where we believe that the older generations are going to get in the way of this pro this progress to implement more technologies and better technologies to facilitate better communications in the workplace. However, the contrary seems to be true, where the older generations are the ones that are more adapting to it, whereas the younger generations don't seem to like the change. And it's probably not the technology, though, as much as it is the change that they don't adapt to as well. So the next article that we're going to examine is The Effects of Service Employees, Technology Readiness on Technology Acceptance by Walzak, Limick, and Strooks. This article focuses on employee willingness to accept modern technologies that are implemented within their daily routines of work. The author states in this research study that most employees only use a fraction of functionality available on their desktop. The research has well concluded that we were able to show the personality makes a difference in the adoption of a process of IT, and this may help to explain how its adoption may be influenced by the personality of the user, as well as the characteristic of the technology, personality characteristic as measured in the TRIs, have significant effect on technology adoption. So what is gathered from these findings regarding this paper is how can human resources work to lead a team that will accept more modern technologies, which would be in the best interest of communication with the human resources as well as their managers to facilitate effective and useful changes in their daily work lives. So now that we've covered relevant literature in regards to the technology and how people seem to adapt to it, Let's start looking at uh, communication literature and how we can implement effective communication styles that can be used in conjunction with this technology, as well as communication styles that can be used in conjunction with the human resource department and the managers. So the first article we're going to look at is um, resistance to organizational change, the impact of followers disposition towards changes in supervisors leadership styles by Highland. It is stated that a growing body of research shows that the organizational change efforts, both evolutionary and revolutionary, often fail. Implementing modern technologies to facilitate the communication can be considered both evolutionary and revolutionary. So what I mean by this is that generally you're you're making some sort of evolution into this into the state of um, into the state of technology communication, whereas you're implementing some sort of way that the employees can talk to their employers in a in an anonymous type of way that has no bearing on them and no effects on them negatively at least. So what we're gonna so and it's also revolutionary because if this idea does come to fruition and does work effectively, then that means that we're basically going to have a big uh, change and it's going to be a huge change for the department as a whole. So <clears throat> now we're gonna look at what leadership styles would specifically work to facilitate the most effective change in the situation. 
So according to an article titled, Bases of Social Power, Leadership Styles and Organizational Commitment by Piero, Raven, Amato, and Bellinger, it is stated that social power is defined as the potential or ability of an agent to bring cha changes in attitude, behavior, or belief by using resources available to him or her. So leadership, on the other hand, refers to the actual use of power in affecting attitude behavioral changes. So this means that utilizing an effective leadership style is crucial to the success of this initiative. So now we need to ask what type of leadership styles are best, though. What kind of leadership is going to get the most people on board, get the most people behind you in this initiative to change the way we communicate with our employers and our leaders in the workplace? So, so first of so we need to talk about uh, what leadership styles are best. So um, the article continues that both transformational and charismatic leaderships have been shown to influence organizational members by transforming their values and priorities while motivating them to perform beyond their expectations. So this begs the question, what are transformational and charismatic leadership styles that this article claims to be the way they do it? BusinessDictionary.com defines transformational leadership as a style of leadership in which their leader identifies the need of change, creates a vision to guide the change through inspiration, executes the change with the commitment of the members of the group. BusinessDictionary.com also defines charismatic leadership style as the guidance provided to an organization by one or more individuals seen as a heroic or inspiring and to have therefore been granted organizational power to make dramatic changes and extract ordinary performance levels from its staff. Both types of leadership have a strong leader involved and the one who will be able to effectively facilitate major change in the organization most effectively. They both have a keen sense of commitment intertwined with their ideals, and this speaks to the idea that leaders committed and then the followers should be as well. So human resources role in all of this can be defined by this. Um, an article titled uh, Add Value to Internal Communications or Human Resources Management uh, by Talal, the researcher. The researcher provides the information that human resources management is commonly defined as a process of acquiring training and appraising and compensating employees and attending to their labor relations, health and safety and fairness concerns, and as a strategic and cohort operation to the management of organization's most valued assets. This then means that human resources role is focused on the employee's well-being within the company. This would mean that finding means for employees to communicate any grievances with their managers would fall under the role of human resources. So considering what types of ideas can be implemented is important to this task. So an article by John Gallagheri explains that the Nassau County has implemented basically some sort of online suggestion box. And this suggestion box is so residents in this county can talk to their county leaders about changes they want done. So Caligari states in this article, we're fully aware that the budget deficit that Nassau County is facing for the immediate future. Herber said, everyone you speak to seems to have a solution or idea they think will help to solve this fiscal mess caused by the sluggish economy. When you post your idea in any of the 21 topic ideas listed, the community will vote and you will know the idea has merit. So this idea can be efficient because it would allow employees to talk to their employers in an anonymous way. And then it also allows people to upvote the posts that they have. And so the managers will see, first and foremost, the ones that the employees feel that they are most passionate about. However, there was a discovered conflict uh, with one article that I found in terms of human resources related to technology and employees. So. The article is titled Psychology of, Community Te Commun Excuse me, Psychology of Communication Technology Use in the Workplace by Easton Glenn Griffiths. And this article states that competing motivations for the communication technology can use can occur between employers and employees. Use of communication technology in the workplace may be tempted by the organization's guidelines concerning technology use, including policies towards personal use of restrictions. The article also goes on to state that in the workplace, boredom is common, costly and detrimental to the organization. It is an unpleasant, transient, effective state in which the individual feels pervasive lack of interest in the difficulty in concentrating on the current activity, and also feels that it takes the conclusion, excuse me, it also takes the conclusion uh, and feel, it also takes conscious effort to maintain and return attention to the activity. So though the technology does help to facilitate change and make productivity better, on the flip side, it makes it so employees can be more distracted and more more, uh, you know, uh, yeah, so on to the interdisciplinary research section. Each discipline that has been chosen to analyze this complex problem is relevant in its own way. Human resources chosen because of its relevance to the impact of the modern day workplace. BusinessDictionary.com defined HR as the division of a company that is focused on activities related to employees. These activities include recruiting, hiring, new employees, orientation and training of current employees, benefits, retention, and this department was formerly referred to as personnel. 
So human resources main function is to create a workplace environment that basically is optimizing the employees to function to the best of their ability, regardless of anything that comes about. So communication comes into play in this because being able to describe the explain and explain to your workforce what the end goals are is an important part of the process. And likewise, the employees need to be able to effectively communicate to their human resources department what their feelings on the issue are. As the human resources department, it should be your duty to attempt to find the most effective form of communication to find out what it is your employees need to be successful. Organizational leadership comes into play because finding the best type of leadership style to implement to facilitate the change. To create better technologies, environments within the workplace, there must be some form of leadership. You need to have the right type of leadership to implement a major change such as this to talk about communicating with your employers and managers. So conflicts that arise are any sort of, they always arise with interdisciplinary ideas. So with this type of process, the main dilemma is the change will be made. The main issue with the change being made is that no matter how thorough the research, how well the leadership is done, and how well effective human resources strategies are implemented, this change will never appease everyone. You're never going to have a situation where every HR practice is going to appease everyone, no matter what leadership style you use. Another conflict that can be asserted, assessed in the conflict between human resources and leadership. This is a very similar conflict that not everyone is going to respond to a specific leadership style in the same way as they would a communication style. So just like the communication style aspect I talked about, you're never going to be able to communicate to everybody in the exact same way that the, or I'm sorry, you're never going to be able to communicate to everybody in a way that appeases everyone, just like you're never going to have a leadership style that appeases everybody in their sense. So in these disciplines, though, common ground is a much easier aspect to come across as opposed to conflicts because HR is all about communicating with the employees and leadership is what HR is about. Human resources is meant to lead employees into a type of situation where they are most effective. So, in the article by Common, uh, company, it stated that companies that continue to rely on traditional communication methods such as lengthy emails, time-consuming seminars, and brochures or pamphlets that result in more questions than they solve will struggle to engage, motivate, and ultimately retain their talent. So this means that companies are looking for new and innovative ideas to foster communication between the employees and management. Effective communication means employee satisfaction and employee retention as well. So basically, he's saying that the older methods are not going to work forever. We're getting into these newer technologies. We need to have newer ways for employees to communicate to their employers and employers to communicate to their employees. So facilitating a change without the help of acting leader would be next to impossible. Finding the right leadership style to work in conjunction with the communication methods in the human resources department would be a very important aspect of this complex problem. So these points all work together to create common ground between all three other disciplines. Uh, human resources has the function of creating the best possible workplace for its employees and working to optimize them efficiently. This, however, cannot be done without the help of communication to create a situation where employees can communicate with their managers and HR to voice their opinions and explain in the best manner why these things need to be changed. On the other hand, you can't implement anything without leadership, and the leadership styles had to be there as well. So all three of these are going to work together to create this initiative. And on to the conclusion. As, a, excuse me, as established in the conflict, it is, not, it is not possible to appease everyone, which means no matter how human resources utilize in conjunction with communication and organizational leadership, satisfaction among everyone will not be achieved. So the best strategies to be implemented that we have come to, that we have come to see is the anonymous um, the anonymous suggestion box that Nassau County implemented because this creates a situation where employees can talk to their employers anonymously with no backlash and no reason for them to get in trouble or have the employee not in trouble but for the manager to pick on them so so they say and make it so they're singled out in any way because they made the suggestion it protects the employees it's an anonymous way and it uses technology to create a situation where the employer and the employee can talk and with uh, not with anonymity utilizing technology to effectively store this data and use what we have to facilitate it a little bit better. So once this data is collected, the human resources department decides on a course of action with the most effective leadership style. And the leadership styles we've talked about is transformational and charismatic because they both seem to facilitate the best change effectively. And so what has been gathered through the research and the communication method does matter and the utilizing technology available communication can better create and understand technologies. The only flaw in the study that I can really think of that I've had is that you can't, we haven't actually, you know, researched it on real life subjects. So this is all hypotheticals at this point. However, I do believe that this is going to be efficient and this would be the most effective way to allow for communication to facilitate, technology to facilitate communication between employer and employee. So I want to thank you all for joining me. Um, 
for my presentation on my senior thesis and have a good day.